obviously. Over time, and probably a period of years, the aunt wanes by default. So now she owns all 300 acres. Now what does she do? She decides, well, she is going to, at the request of this attorney, have it put up for auction. And so the county assists her and has a survey done of the property and they subdivide and they put a lot, a lot of energy into it. They hire engineers, geologists, environmentalists, and all these reports are generated out of this land to see all the usefulness of it. And all the reports come back good. No environmental concerns, right? The soil is still good because even though it used to be used years ago for tobacco, nobody's been planting anything on it for the past 10 or 15 years. So the soil is virgin soil. Two highways have since been built nearby. There's a river. Uh, and, and basically untapped river that runs right through the middle. We're not scriptural. However, their gas lines run through it, telephone lines run through it. It's ideal for Have 
can they send you a list? <laughs> a read a list. The document's already there. They had already stamped it. There's no question about it. They have to stamp it once they receive it. Especially the way we sent it. They have to stamp it. So, come to find out it only cost eight dollars. But you see, what's, what's really important is that the lady is trying to tell her anything on the phone. It's like, you're from out of town. I know you're not going to come down here and really see about this thing. And we, we got this thing locked up. They've been planning it for a long time. The engineering study was a year old. The civil engineering study where they had laid out, they had laid out how they were even going to grade the property. Uh oh, they had it. Whoa, it was locked up. So now, she sends the document out to everybody, to the realtor, to the title company, to the people who were on the list to attend the auction. She sends it to the whole, and then the attorney got on the phone and called and said, well, you're sending the document to everybody in the world. <laughs> right? yeah. So they had to shut everything down. Now, the point is this. Had Joyce not been a moor, she would not have been able to stop these people from taking her family's land. This land is in Virginia, and just so happened, I was in Virginia over the holiday. And when did we do that for Joyce Charlie? About a month ago? Right before Thanksgiving, wasn't it? I think it was. Seems like it was around Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was around Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, this is just phenomenal. Not only were the articles in the Tribune, I didn't get the Tribune yet, but the articles came out in Philadelphia where Joyce is, where we are, because a lot of these things that were emanating were coming from Philadelphia, because she said, well, what should I do? I said, record it in Philadelphia, too. So it's recorded in Philadelphia. Just in case they try to play games down here, okay? Because when you record, you can record in any county in, in the world. Now, in Virginia, but this is my hometown where this newspaper came out of, right? They got not just one day, they got a three-day series of articles on the very issue I just saw for Joyce. And they titled it Unfair Law of the Land, and it's called partitioning. How when there are multiple family members who own air, land, air property in common, that if one heir sells their interest in the land, then whoever they sell it to can force an auction of the whole thing. It's called partitioning. This is how they took most of our land. And then they try to say, well, the reason that this happens is because the people died and didn't leave a will. They go on, I'll pass it around. They go on to say that 80% of the people, of, of most of the people who are affected by this, 80% of them are African American. It's the same. Now, do you see the danger? Do you see the danger? Now, here's what's important. These articles came out because of what we did. Now, what's very interesting in these articles is that, I, I don't know what this one is right here. This one is another, which area tore apart. This is part of it here. The rest of the series, it's all different where in the end, the bottom line to the story is, this land was unfairly taken, but the law was used. This is what, this is, this is what they're saying in these articles. Yes, it may be unfair, but it's the law. So everything that they did was lawful and above board. Therefore, the people who, all these families who they're talking about who lost this land, it's just too bad because they weren't taking care of their family business, now they're SOL, right? Now, then they go on to put a whole bunch of internet sites listed in the article on the next page that blacks and African Americans can go to to search for information, genealogy information, county records information, and blah, 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 deed transfers, and so forth and so on. Now, do you think black people who had any deed interest in any property are going to be able to get their land back? No. The chances are not just nil, it's zero. Absolutely.
chance at all to get their name back. So why are they running the story? To make the people upset? You know, the people are already upset. They know they lost the land. They have to got some of them a lady in there with a red dress on. Like she's representing of being a moor in her moor's consciousness and the family plan. They're smiling. And they lost 300 and some acres of their family land. Was taken through this process called partition. And they're sitting in there smiling and saying, well, you know, the attitude is, well, you know, I feel bad about it, but <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it. Then they have a Negro that says, oh, well, this happened to our family back in the 50s, and you shouldn't speak up and say anything, lest you be hanged. Never own. You, you cannot. 
not, it is not possible. It is not possible if you own anything out of the state board. It's not, it's just not, it doesn't exist. Right. 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 And you don't even own an owner. You, you, your children don't even, you guardian of your children because they belong to the state. I'm sorry, I promised Rosie I was going to get her, then I'll come back to you. Yes, but they're but they're explaining it from a black perspective, right. as if it's black people, African Americans. So, what is the intent? How are they want to? If they were slaves, how where is the? How do these people get all this money? Exactly, and that's why they're trying to qualify it as in 1873. You understand what I'm saying? Post Civil War, right. as if to say that this land was left to him after he became free. Or he, maybe his master gave it to him as a settlement or something like that. Well, they took it from the until 40 acres. Right, that's right. Don't this is where it is. Don't tell him to give me 40 acres when I own 300. Exactly. Right, exactly. You know I mean? right. right. And no album, right, is indigenous to nowhere in the world. That's right. He's not a rich man. Mm -hmm. so anything he owns here has to be stolen. That's right. There's a perception of ownership. Because ownership for them doesn't exist. So when they go back and start looking at, I mean, well, the state boards, but if they go back and see where the land where it first started being part, uh, partitioned off, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. they can't go back in and say because they didn't know anything about the land being sold or that they were heirs to it, they, they, there's no, they have no uh, fight. They have no recourse because what they're asking, they would have to sue in court. And what they would ask, in order to get the decision reversed, they would have to prove that there was an error or some kind of way. And there is no way that an Albion judge sitting in an Albion controlled court is going to reverse a decision like that. First of all, um, when, when the challenges did come, there were some of them that did have challenges and came before the courts to challenge, the courts ruled against them anyway, ruled in favor of the partition sale anyway, okay? Because some of them were saying they didn't get served. Exactly. Now, any judge that has a group of people come forward and say, we were never served, should never give a court order granting the partition sale. But they were doing it anyway. So it didn't matter that the people came in. And then it talks about how their own attorneys did not um, um, operate in their own best interest. Well, of course not. <laughs> OK, that goes without saying that the attorneys weren't going to work in their best interest. Right? Okay. These are officers of the court. Right, they're officers of the court. But they come in pro se anyway. That's correct. That's why. But it's not just because they're pro se. It's because they're going into that jurisdiction, period. Well, what's interesting is this guy out, out in March. I mean, this statement here, man who doesn't have land and has no freedom at all. Yes. Um, that he comes to the conclusion. Mm -hmm. And now that makes this one person here, they want to say, shoot away 500 and something acres after the Civil War. After the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you see how ridiculous. Yeah. Right. When we get. See how ridiculous that is? And they're talking about oil rigs now. Oil rigs down the street from his family. Now, see, this is one of the reasons that all of that happened is because when certain mineral rights came in, because they said that when the land was partitioned, they were awarded mineral rights, uh, riparian rights, which gives them the right to the waterways, the fish, and all that kind of stuff like that there. They got all the rights that come with land ownership. The ones who were awarded the partition, and, and, and bought the property at auction, were awarded all of those rights, almost as if they owned the land a lodium. Okay? So now, the other thing that you need to know is that at these partition sales, of course, they have it all hooked up so all their buddies are in there bidding. Right. You know that. Right. And they end up bidding, and they don't bid very much money. Sure. 
because this one property I think was 300 and some or 200 and some acres. It might have been that 500 some acres. What did they give the guy? A used truck? They gave him a used truck, $1,000. For what? 500 and some acres of land. Okay? So now, in the other partition sale, and what they tried to do with Joyce's family, 300 and some acres of land sold for $240,000, which is less than $1,000 an acre. It was worth more than $1,000 an acre if it had an environmental problem on it. Yes? It says, like, at January 21st, 1956, also, uh, also the 80 acres for 6400 He quickly sold the land and the oil and gas right. Oil and gas. Let's specify now, record show. <laughs> but the land changed hands several times before being acquired in 1996. Just think, it says about truck. Oh, yeah. The deed file of Old Scripture Limited was paid $100 cash and other consideration for used truck and $100. How many acres was that one? 160. This is for this whole 160 acres. Right, but the guy, the Albion, ended up having the whole thing, even though he started off petitioning for 80 acres. He ended up with the whole thing. Yes, sir. So he started off with 11, 11, right. off with 11, 11 acres. Right. Well, the guy owned 80 or 160 or something, and, and, and uh, the Marsh guy who owned that part gave this man a deed for 11 acres out of his 80. And because he had deed interest in 11 acres, he was able to sue the rest of the family, go to court, and force a partition sale on the whole 500 and some acres. That's something that I would read. Right. And making everybody else have to sell their shares. Right. Now you, you buy a share of Coca-Cola, then you force a sale of the whole company. Right. That's, 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 that would never happen. Now, what, what is lawful about that? Lawful. <laughs> then they got law of the land. Yes, Plus, half those people were spies, and they took over the right of the law of the land. Right. Is that from a woman that I just said? No, I said the, the Avionics were spies. Right. Now you see, the reason that whole thing could come about was because they had deeds. If they did not have deeds, this whole idea of a partition sale could not exist. Could not exist. But our ancestors got away from using titles. They got away from knowing. And and here's the here's the very sad part. There was a time when there was no such thing as a deed. They were only titles. That's all they had was titles. Now all of a sudden there's this new fancy document called the deed, and they come out to to the uh, rural areas. They came everywhere, but out into the rural areas, if you watch the westerns, you see this happen often. They call them the corrupt bankers. Come out there and tell somebody, just put your X right there on the deed, and next thing you know. Boom, they're in the tax system, and they are, they are a part of all this, uh, this that comes with it. Because if you have a deed, you have to pay the school assessment tax. Right. If you have a deed, you have to pay the property tax. If you have a deed, you have to pay the water and the sewer tax. You agree to that. But that's never on the deed in that language. How is it on the deed? How do you know on your deed that you have to pay tax? That you've agreed to pay taxes. It's got to be an adhesion contract. It's an adhesion contract, that's true. But there's some language on every deed that people don't know. They see it, but they don't understand the implication of it. And they sign off on it. It's how they reference the property. What do they call the property? They'll say lot and block number. Mm -hmm. That is solid. That has to be on every D document. Because that's solid. Lot and block number. Always remember that. Then they go on and say, lot number, block number, right? Then they go on and say, Five 
20 Market Street. Not quite. 520 Market Street, but that's corporate. Then they go on to say, tax match number. And there you go. Once they've assigned it a tax map number, you're in. Because they're map, but it doesn't have to be a tax map. And what? Huh? With net map, that's right. <laughs> net map. How we, and that's how we're going to win that case. Because we're going to win that case. We're getting our money. We're going to have that building. Because on the tax map, it says that they are tax exempt. It says that the property is tax exempt, and yet they're paying taxes. We don't know who's actually yeah, collecting what's happening with the money. But on the tax map, the whole lot is, is on there as tax exempt. No money should they're laundering money. Mm -hmm. And they're going to jail. Because we're going to bring the whole story out. And they're going to pay us. They're going to pay us. Now, did you ever think that that's what lured you in? That's what got you? That thing right there causes a whole lot of things to happen to you. If it has a tax map number and there's nothing there, what they've done is they've moved it. And they'll put it lot and block number and they'll assign it like a fancy registration number. They'll say tax map number and they might be blank, but somewhere else on the document they'll have registration number. Philadelphia does that. Philadelphia does that. And then what happens in their deeds office, where they have all the tax maps, in, Phil huh? in Philadelphia they have the tax maps, they're huge, and they have them encased in plastic, but you can go in here, and they have, they have every property in the city of Philadelphia, a tax is on the tax map. And on the tax map, it has a reference number that you've never seen. You're buying a house unless you happen to know to go into the deeds office and look it up on the tax map and see where you are. And, and that number that's on the tax map is part of the registration number. It, it's like, yeah, like the tax map number might be 14G. Like on map number 14 spot G, something like that. It might be 14G7, something like that, okay? But the registration number might be 140-14-G-7-102. A registration number. You see what I'm saying? Now, in that registration number is that. So they know, because they're working there, that this part represents the tax map, where they can go and find it on the tax map. This split. And this, because of this, you pay taxes. And you won't find a deed that doesn't happen. So what happens is if people, if they have title and they end up being just and then having deeds applied to this land, and they're used to living off the land and being self-sufficient, then once they have to come up with cash dollars, that's how they lose the land. So they yes. can't pay into their system. Yes. Because Not just because they can't. A lot of them don't understand why all of a sudden they're getting a bill. And they don't pay it. And you can't make, and they take that position. My ancestors, if we've lived here all our lives, my mother, my grandfather, you know, all that. And so they take a position, right? The second thing that happens, even if they take a position, say they go to court, like my great, my great grandfather did, went to court and defended it. And he won the first go round, okay? Because he had his paperwork in order. I don't know how much he understood about the law. But he won the first go round. But they kept after the property. And they kept after him and after him. So by the time he was, became elderly, right. they really started bombarding him and constantly having the sheriffs come out and serve him papers. And they had guns and different things like that. And they would come out in the middle of the night to serve papers and all that kind of nonsense. And he lived alone and they scared him. Okay? So. This is what they're saying, a deed could be a death sentence. And they scared him to the point that 
Um, by the time he was going to court and he was elderly and everything, they took advantage of him. Okay? So now, um, all of them are in cahoots. That's the other thing that you have to understand. The sheriff, the judges, the, the, um, the people who are after the property, the tax collectors and all that, they're all in a grand conspiracy to take this land. Okay. Exactly, everybody gets paid. Right. And remember in the class slavery, the truth, where we talked about how they would take the land this way. Then what they used to do, they used to have what was called debtor's prison or tax jail. So they would take, like my great great grandfather, he didn't pay the tax, they came on the property and took him to jail. Because they couldn't get the property. Okay? They took him to jail. Now, what happens is this. He didn't have a deed. They took him to jail in another county, put him in shackles and all that. And he told the story that where they took him to work on a farm, which we would turn a plantation, where Albion lived in the big house. This was slavery. This is why a lot of our people believe that their grandparents and great grandparents were slaves. What happened to him after the time period was up, and I don't know how long that was, and they let him out, and he went back to his own land. There was an Albion family living in his house, on his land. They were living in his house. Now, he didn't even know how they get there. He didn't know. Here's what happened. This is how they revolved the people. So after they took my grandfather off his land, they put an Albion family in the house. Then they would take somebody else from another county or another area and put them in tax jail and send them to his property where there's an Albion family in the house and there they were working the land. And the perception of that one is they see the Albion family in the house, they think the Albion family owns the land, but they didn't. So anyway, he had to go to court to have this Albion family removed from his house and it took some time. I don't know how long. But after the Albion family moved out of the house, he moved back in and continued to receive these tax bills and still refused to pay. Well, otherwise, he didn't pay. So the next time they came and got him in shackles again, the same thing took him off the land, and he passed away after they took it. So he never returned back to his home. So um, by the time his children get involved, they come and say, well, um, one of them starts within the house. They're presented with a deed document to sign to protect the property. And they didn't know any better. So of course, by them having a deed document, the tax assessment was too high for any of them to pay. And they lost the property due to tax foreclosure. So these kinds of things, they have done over and over and over. And it's nothing new. This whole thing with this partition, they say, well, it's lawful. No, it's legal, but it's not lawful by any means. The problem is that in the status of being black, you cannot solve it. Not by being African American and not by having a deed. Now, these people think they're going to go and challenge the deed. That's how they're proposing to solve this. They're going to send all these black people out there to challenge the deed, and they won't win. Uh -uh, there's no way for them to win because the only thing they can do is say, the only thing that a court could possibly do is say, work out a settlement. Because now the developer, mall, you see, the county building, here's, imagine the dilemma of that family. The very county courthouse where they have to bring the suit is sitting on their land. Mm. Do they stand a chance to win in that court when it's sitting on their land? No, no, not at all. I mean, you got to see what they're up against. A, a professional baseball training facility is on these other people's land. Do they stand a chance against a professional baseball team to fight that fight? Another part of that when you describe how perfect the land is, it's so perfect that they want to go and destroy it. That's all they can do. Now, they have a problem. Because here we are, <laughs> no one needs it. And here we are, in our sovereign staff. And the problem with us, as far as they're concerned, is that we don't have to go to their court to get a court order to undo what they did. We have the power by our signature under the jurisdiction of the
government on the right, which is a phenomenal achievement to reestablish a government. I mean, you read about these things in history. You read about how um, Hannibal, let's, let's talk about the, the Punic Wars for a minute. Hannibal in the Punic War, in the first Punic War at least, he defeated the Roman Empire. He crossed the Alps on his elephant, and he defeated the Roman Empire and reestablished the power that was Carthage, the Moors, and reestablished the capital at Carthage. Now, they say the capital had fallen, okay, to the Romans. And he reestablished the capital. What are we really saying? Because none of these battles are physical. They're not out there on, 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 on the battlefield with swords and knives and that kind of stuff they show in the movie. These are court battles. Every moment, the Battle of Trenton, the Battle of Brandywine, right? I was discussing that. The Battle of uh, Georgetown, the Battle of Yorktown, they are all court battles. They're all court battles. And uh, we have a lot of here. Did you bring them? I always forget to bring this when I'm going to talk about something I need to talk about. Talk about the you have one that should be in there. So I said, we don't, we didn't bring our kids. My tongue is always had it. He didn't bring it. No, actually, probably is not in there. Yes, would you please? We can check it anyway. That's a good, that's a good idea. Uh, you have a full one? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I know it's going to be in there. Rather than taking a chance. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So, by the fact that all of these battles are in the courtroom, tells you that there's something phenomenal going on. These people sued to get this land. They had to file a lawsuit against the family and file the lawsuit in a court where they knew the jurisdiction would be agreeable for them to win. You see, because the type of court you use is going to get you a different type of outcome. If you file a lawsuit in a jurisdiction that's foreign to you, you can expect the outcome to be in favor of the other individual. If you file a lawsuit in your own court and in the jurisdiction of your people, you can expect that the outcome is most likely going to be in your favor. But what our ancestors stopped doing is filing lawsuits in their own jurisdiction. And they started filing lawsuits in the Albion courts. What other outcome could they expect? Huh? It's still going on. I'm just thinking that there is part of the old Magna Carta. Uh huh. When they had the, the title, so they would have been sovereign. Yes. So if the families did the if the family wanted to do a title search, no, they would never find it. You see, titles, this is, this is one of the things I was getting ready to talk about. 
They have everything. They have the fans, they have the seating, they have the lights, the scoreboard, the empires, and the referees work for them and everything. Then you just show up on the field. You just call that home court advantage. Home court advantage. That's right. like you're going to court. Right. Like you're going home court, court advantage. Exactly. In their jurisdiction. So now, this is why what we do is so important. It's the only way to get our land back for our people. I'm not saying that we need to go and contact all the Negroes and tell them, look, we can help you out. Because, that, look, first of all, we shouldn't do it because Negroes are profane and we're going to encounter more problems than we can handle and we even engage in the next discussion. And number two, because they agree to be out of their status, because when people seek the light and they want truth and light, truth and light will come. And there will be some people who will come forward and say, look, I want a way to find the find a way to get my family's land back. One of the first things that we need to do is research in our own land and our own backyard first because this story that we're talking about here has happened to all of us and our families in some form or fashion. Because this is one of the things that attracted me to become a little more because I said, yeah, my grand my great grandfather's land was taken from him. And you know the family always talked about how it was done illegally and everything like that. And my great grandfather should have been a slave at the time that he owned all this land. And he wasn't. And he put together a school. Now, slaves don't own land. He put together a school and, and own a car. He owned a car. And all these kinds of things like that during the time when slavery was in effect. How is that possible? I didn't understand that even before I became a Moor. So when I heard about the Moors, I said, oh, now the story of my great grandfather makes sense. And this is happening to all of us. Now, on the great seal and the power of the template we build, the template is a document we've already created. And it works. There's no question about it. We've tested it. We know that it works. What does a template do that a deed does? See, this is important because all, all those people out there who want to search the web and go and pay attorneys to try to fight a battle for them and all that kind of nonsense, they're not only not going to win because they're black <laughs> and they're fighting up the back hell in the other one's court, in the adversary's court, but they're not going to win because what they're asking for is the interest. They're asking the court to take away the interest from that one and, and bestow the interest to them. And that is something that, first of all, the court cannot do. Even if they come across a judge who's sympathetic and whatever, the, the court cannot do that because the interest, first of all, what happens 
competition sales. What they do is they say we're selling, we're allowing this individual to buy, to buy the interest in the land because the court, being a corporation itself, cannot grant title in land. Did you hear me? A court, a title cannot be granted by a court.
June. The land patent. What is a land patent? Is it equivalent to a title or is it equivalent to a deed? Exactly. So King Charles II granted William Penn Jr. deed interest in Pennsylvania. He did not and could not give him a title to Pennsylvania. So those Albions thought they were slick. They said, oh, if there are any titles to any land in any county in Pennsylvania, we'll burn it. We'll destroy it. And if they can't find the history, then our deeds will be in place. And ha, 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 tricks on you. Because you don't know the difference between a title and a deed. And now you think we own it. We tricked you. And even if you think that there was once a title on the land, we burned them all, so ha, 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 tricks on you, you can't find it because you have no proof. When you try to present something in our court, you say, where's your proof? You don't have it, you lose. We win. Now, have you ever had something taken from you or stolen from you? How many of you have been fortunate enough to get it back? To get back something that was stolen from you. <coughs> Say, for example, if your car was stolen. And then you go out and you find the car. Do you say, oh, well, it's theirs now? No. No. <coughs> you see, the universe does not allow that to happen to you. That if your car is stolen, the one who stole it knows it's stolen. So when you claim, when you step up to claim it, they will acquiesce. They won't say, this is mine. They'll be cowardly and they'll be nervous and scared because they know they stole it from you. But say that nobody knew it was yours but you. And, and they didn't know that. But here you are and say they did say, well, this is mine now because I've had it. I stole this car last year. So I had this car for a whole year, so it's mine now. I, I put new brakes on it and new tires on it, and I've been driving it every day, so now it's mine. So, what do you say about that? It still doesn't belong to you. It does it. You had it for a year, you put gas in it, you drove it to work every day, you put new tires on it, you think maybe you got a new paint job and everything. What do you say to somebody who stole your car last year? Thank you. Give it back. Thank you for the work you put in, right? And see, this is important because Albion is a good for saying, well, we're not responsible for what our ancestors did. We're not responsible for slavery. And, well, maybe that is true that the land was taken unfairly, but we have it now and we paid some money for it, and now, well, it's ours. <laughs> you know what we say? You singing the wrong tune because this is not this land is my land, this land is your land. Uh -uh. <laughs> this land is my land. Right. So thank you for all the environmental surveys you did. Thank you for, you know, whatever development you did. But guess what? Now you got to turn it over because now I'm here to claim my uh -huh. land. And then you know what they say? Well, where's your proof? You don't have any proof because they know the ancestors burned all that. So you go to claim your car and they say, well, where's your proof? Where's your title? Right? And what happened was they had a friend working in the state, in the DMV in the state, who burned the title, got rid of it, got rid of the whole record of it. Now, you don't have your title and the state doesn't have a record of it. And they say, well, where's your proof? And what do you say? Where's your proof? They have the car. They have possession of the car. But, but say, but say, here you go. Here's what happened. Not only did they, they, the friend destroy, in the DMV, destroy your title there, right, your certificate title, they printed one up with their name on it. But you know that's your car. How do you want to get your car? Put Y'all know straight. You do not need the state to approve you to have a title. Mm -hmm. No. That car is yours. There is nothing in the world to say that you can't go and put a title on the record because that is your car. Now, you put the title on the record. Now, before the one you put on the record, none existed, right? Now they'll be clamoring around trying to find some record of some other document, right? And they don't have it because what they had was a certificate of title. And a certificate of title only certifies that a title exists somewhere. Mm, right. And in and of itself is not a title. Right. Right. Now you say, well, look, you got a certificate that says a title exists, right? 
stand behind you and say, because one of the things that happens with this, and there, there are a few people who, who have it, who have it, isn't it? And one of the things that happen is there are absolutely no taxes. You see, the only reason you have taxes is because there's a deed. If there's a deed, there's taxes. Over here, there are no taxes. Here's the way it works. As soon as you put a deed on the county record, that tax map information is there. And you try to record a deed with the county that doesn't have the tax map information on it, they won't record it because we tried. So don't even think that you can do that. But what happens when you put a template on the record is that it supersedes the deed, as if the deed doesn't exist. So they can't put it in their tax system. There's no structure, there's no interface, in other words, for them to use. They can't use it. They can't do that. It doesn't go together. So they can't, you won't even receive a tax bill from the municipality. It's just not no taxes. I mean, no property taxes. No school assessment tax. No sewer tax. And no water tax. Well, people are paying thousands of dollars a year in these taxes. A patent is a grant. Anytime you hear the word patent, it says grant a patent. And wherever there's a grant, there's a sovereign that granted it to someone or something, usually non-sovereign. So wherever you see the term patent, think the term deed. Patent, deed. Patent, deed. They go together. So there's no such thing as an allodial patent. <laughs> Just like there's no such thing as an allodial patent. I mean, it's just not there. Is there a loyal title? Uh, absolutely. And then the only loyal titles are the ones we created. So see, now, what we did is we said, well, we put a title on the state of New Jersey. Now, we're going to start activating this title coming up next year. Anyway, what happens is we say, us, collectively, the Moors, own the state of New Jersey. We own all the land in New Jersey. So wherever we are, wherever we live, we don't have to pay any taxes anywhere. The next step is, by the way, you own my land. So because you own my land, you owe a land assessment fee. We're not asking you to move, just pay us. And guess what? They're going to pay us. They're going to pay us. Because the very, they caught in a catch-22. They don't have a deed. They said that the title didn't exist. I have the court decisions to prove what they said. You can't, no, no title. Fine. You didn't, there's a lot that said we can't create one. So we did. So it doesn't matter that our ancestors' information is all burned. It's gone. It's history. We create something that is new, that applies to what we're dealing with today, right now. So now, they don't have a law, I mean, any uh, legal, any statutes, and they don't have any code that addresses this issue over here. So it's like, have you ever wound up like a toy or something, like an electric, electronic toy or something, you put too much power in it, this car's going. <laughs> Energizing button. Huh? Energizing button. Right, right, like that. And if they start going all crazy and everything, like what, and start blowing up, kind of like that. Well, this is what's going to happen to them as we exercise the power of the timbers because it hits a nerve that they can't, it starts giving them spasms because they can't solve it. They can't handle it. There's nothing in their system, in their mechanism. You know, it's like putting sugar in a gas tank. Right? The gas tank goes crazy, so it just goes into a rest. That's right. So the very Constitution 
that our ancestors put in place for us protect us over here. Because they can't go against that constitution, which is a court order. They can't go against that document, lest they destroy their own government.
rates, corporate papers are recorded in Mercer County. Therefore, make their headquarters. That's all. And therefore, when you register your automobile with them, they take the same documents, they sign off on it, and they get it recorded in Mercer County. Now you're under their jurisdiction. But guess what? You didn't have to go to them to get your, your title of your automobile recorded in Mercer County. With me? So, so the, the, the dealer who sells you the car has got nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. That's up to you to do. No. Even if you do or even if you don't, it doesn't matter whether the car is financed or not. That's a totally separate thing. What we're talking about is ownership of the car. Because the part is that if, the, if you finance the car, um, you therefore give the finance company interest in the automobile until the debt is paid. You're putting up the car as collateral just like you put up a house as collateral or a boat as collateral. And you're saying that I agree to pay this bill and if I don't, here's my collateral, which is my good faith that I'm going to pay you. And if I don't pay you, then you can take this. So, in some cases where people have good credit, they don't necessarily have to put up collateral. There are people who can borrow money against their house without putting the house up as collateral. You understand? There are people who borrow money for a car and put up the house as collateral and not the car. You understand? They borrow against the equity in their house. And if you borrow against the equity in the house, the chance of having your car repossessed is almost zero. Because what will happen is they'll put a lien against the house in order to collect. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Or it depends on how much time I've seen them become real corrupt, they'll repossess the car and still put a lien against the house. Okay. All right. But for Albion, they don't do that. For Albion, they don't repossess. They just put a lien against the house. You see? And that's why Albion's are always buying cars against the equity in their house because they know they got their in the game and they're not going to have their thing repossessed. The most that'll happen to them is a lien if it's put against the house and it goes bad on their credit or something, but they'll still have the car and then eventually if they want to, they'll pay off the debt and have the lien removed. Or they'll fight it and have the lien removed and not pay a dime. Right. Well, no, I just want to like, sort of confirm what you said as far as about the automobile is concerned. Uh, I have a friend of mine who, who's uh, sort of worked in the past here, they've been years ago, kind of and he left her a car. She tried to sell it, she couldn't find the certificate to it. So she went to a maze landing to get it. And the woman told her that well, he didn't own the car, I needed you. The state owns this car. And they told her, and then they wanted her to bring, what else, what else did he give you? What else did he leave you? Because if the state had, was probably put in probate court. Well, they were trying and, to get a book. And in probate, that's what happens. They the state right takes everything. They told her right out there. You don't need on this car, and you don't need it. See, I just got around it. But see, state boards can't have titles to anything. They can't have titles to automobiles. They can't have titles to property, books. They can't have their birth certificates recorded directly. They can't have, you know, driver's license, death certificate, marriage, voting, none of that. This is reserved only for more. This is more only. And the other thing is that before we created this mm -hmm. hit list, we went around trying to find an example of a title. We went on a hunt. We, went, we spent days and days and days going to different county deed offices trying to find, going back and back and back in time, trying to find a title somewhere. And of course you know we did. But we didn't know that at first. I mean, we were dumb about this. You know, it took us almost a year to finally give up and say, there are no titles out there. There are no titles out there. What are we going to do? We were very discouraged because we felt that because they destroyed everything and they're hiding everything, we don't stand a chance of ever finding a resolution to this problem. They won. That's how we were thinking at first. We kept saying there's something else, something else. Fortunately, Don is from Kiskeya, where they still had a significant amount of the sovereign uh, uh, way of life. So um, we started dealing with.
with the woman who, who, who is now his wife. And we asked her to send us a title. She sent us like three or four different ones. One for an automobile, one for an office building, one for residential and different things like that. Of course, it's all in Spanish. So Don had to interpret. So Don spent the hours to interpret all the language in the title and convert it to English so I could understand it. Then we had some miscommunications because there's some words in Spanish that don't easily translate to English and vice versa. So we had to kind of work things through about that. But the problem with the title that we received was that they were somewhat bastardized because they were coming out of Dominican Republic, okay, instead of Cascade. So we had to work through some things. But we managed to pull enough language and understanding out of those Spanish titles and create the tinless document that we have today. Now, um, that set us on the right track, but then, of course, there they had basically a homogeneous culture, and they had basically a lot of the, the recorded information of property ownership intact, historically. So they didn't have the same dilemma that we have here, because in Kiskenia there are no deeds. So this whole system over here about deeds doesn't exist down there, all right? So we had to kind of get an understanding because uh, Fabia didn't understand D. So we had to explain to her the difference between D. She says, well, why should anyone want one of those? <laughs> why should you want one? Like, she thought that we were talking about that we wanted to, you know, have D. We had to explain to her, no, we're trying to get rid of D. That's why we want this template. So, Anyway, we managed to get all of that put in place. But here's the thing. If we were not moored, and this is the thing we had to learn, if we were not moored, none of this over here would apply to us even if we knew the difference between a title and a deed. We couldn't, we couldn't exercise this over here. And the other thing that's important is that if we didn't have a government on the record, we could have this document on the record, but who could speak for it? Because contrary to what some of these renegade people think, you cannot be sovereign by yourself. You cannot do it. And when I first engaged in this battle, I got beat up time and time again because I was taught that we, I'm going into court talking about, I am sovereign. I am sovereign. But that's not the proper language. You have to remove the I. And you have to say, my people are a sovereign people. Therefore, I am sovereign. Take this one in, I'm sovereign all by myself. Because the question is, where are your people? You were born, where are the other born? Right? You did this under this race here, where did this win? Show me something. Show something. Prove it. And they knew that they had destroyed all of the history. So then, those that came before us, the Moors, no matter how noble and how um, intense they were to try to make a difference and be on the right path and this and that, all of them, just like me, we're stuck trying to find something in the past. And you cannot do it. You will be lost forever if you go digging into those archives and try to find anything. You will be lost. Just like we were. So, you have to go inside and find the answers inside. Then you can go and see the proof of that out there. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly because they did put a lot of things in the place for us. Yes. So, just by the very nature of us going back and seeking our sovereignty uh, our, and our, our, our story and our, our past, and we, a lot of things become relevant. Yes. And uh, kind of guide from where we're going with it. We have to look inside. We have to look inside. Because we're being created, because we have to create where we're going. That's right. But they put a lot of stuff in our past. That they put a lot of stuff in our past. But fortunately, we're able to, to see our way through. We had enough light within ourselves to see through all the garbage. You know, which is one of the reasons I asked all of you, stop reading that garbage. Remember you asking me about taking a law class at Rutgers or something like that? I said, don't waste your time doing that because they'll send you way out there someplace, or what, totally away from what the reality, the real deal is. Um, you have to stop reading that garbage. I, for one, have stopped reading the newspaper. 
Unless somebody calls me and says there's something of interest in there, I don't read it. I don't watch television with their news on there either. I cannot do it. I cannot keep absorbing that garbage and find my way back home. I, it's too distracting because the, the story, if you, sometimes if you hear it, it kind of gets you to wondering about this thing over here or that thing over there. And here's your path right here. You got to if you're on your path, you shouldn't be, every path that you come across, going down that one a little bit to see what it is. Going down that one a little bit just to see what that is. Don't do that because every time you get away from your path, that takes you longer to get to your destination. And I had to finally realize. Right.
project and all that, we sued them all and everything. Eventually, we went round and round and round in court, and eventually, their judges agreed that there was a, a deficiency in our lien, and so he, re he removed the lien, he issued a court order to remove our lien. We were upset. They owed us $200,000. Now, hmm, did you go back Joyce, oh, this is the way you should go. This is what 
what we should be doing and get the family at odds with each other. So the thing is, even if the family becomes, let them fight. So what? They can't remove that lady. Right? Let them sue her. So what? They can't remove that lady. Whatever they can do, they can't remove that lady. That's it. That's it. That, and that land is up, I told you, it's up to the family to work out what you're going to do with it. Let the family fight over it, whatever, but at least you won't. Right? It's your house. You can fight, kick, box, whatever you do in there. <laughs> but it's yours. <laughs> I, I just have a thought. Um, the people that are parking in, in uh, the parking, mm -hmm. they can't uh, put their money in escrow because it's a lien against the property. And ownership is confused, so they did not pay whoever they was paying and put their money in escrow, right? That's correct, and we're going to do that and make sure that they put the money in escrow. I just wanted to, to drain them financially a little bit. Um, there's another um, part of the court case coming up on the 29th of January. And uh, the case is taking a long time because it is a landmark case. Setting a precedent, so you don't expect these things to happen on the night. So the January 29th, we'll be going back, causing them to spend a whole lot more money. See, they were already in bankruptcy, which of course you know. And they already had bills and stuff like that that they have to pay. And my intent is to destroy them financially. And to do what we already have to lean against it. So now, even once they come out of bankruptcy, they can't borrow any money and they can't sell the building. So the building's sitting there, it's, it's becoming more and more uh, run down, right? Because they don't have the money to fix it up. They can't do anything to the building, right? They can't even get any new tenants. Huh? Right, they can't get any new tenants. Even the space to be left is still vacant over there. They can't move anybody else into the building. Right? Because of all this turmoil and this stuff going on. The next step we're going to do is sue the tenants. We're going to sue the tenants because you pay a little exhibit and that money's supposed to come to us. So, oh yeah, they have to be sued and we're going to win. They're going to pay. But they have to, we have to get them to a point where they, in terms of the court battle, they have to really weaken them. Drain them, drain them, and then we file some more stuff them. Because they got a lot of very uh, powerful people that uh, are owners of this. They're wealthy, and the more money they we know this. So anyway, because of the power of what we've done here, and this is why anybody else out there who want to, who would want to put a lien on something or whatever, they'd be forced into the corporate jurisdiction because. You have to have a government that backs, that backs it up, okay? You have to have a government that backs it up. So, and what is, what is happening, what is going to happen even more as we get more of our paperwork in place and stuff like that, then other countries will, it has an exchange and that is going to give us even more power. And we'll be able to grow as we begin to communicate and get a few logistical and technical problems squared away. But at least we're at the juncture where we're not having to fight amongst ourselves. Uh, we spent, what, four years going through that. Fighting amongst ourselves, being attacked from within, and all that kind of stuff like that, and it just ate away at us. I know it ate away at me, constantly having to hear that kind of stuff and deal with all these internal issues and stuff like that. And I feel finally we have breathing room. We have a very good group. And just as I said to Gio last night, I said, we don't have the numbers that we used to have. But to me, we have a much better group of people <coughs> than we've ever had. Um, the people who know, understand, are conscious and committed to this. And that is, that is worth more than having a thousand people who are health and skelter and all that. Okay? We certainly can't grow that way. Um, this whole thing about the land is, is, is um, the predominant issue for us. It is more of an issue than the money because the money is spendable, it's expendable, it's something that comes and goes, but the land, once we possess it, we'll possess it always, and that is important, and we must possess it, and we must control it, and the resources that are generated from our land, two things we must have. We must live cost of death in our own land, and the people who are using our land for commercial purposes must pay us. The two things. We should not be paying anybody, we should not be putting money into anybody's corporate hands so 
know, um, to buy um, service goods and services or something like that. But even those same companies that we buy goods and services from have to pay their land use assessment for using our land. They must pay that. And then we'll pay them for a coat or a hat or something like that. They're going to pay our land use assessment too. But these things must be in place. And the power is, they can't stop us from placing a lien. And a lien will destroy a company. A lien will destroy a municipality. A series of liens in a municipality will destroy them financially. So they can't get bond money across. They can't sell bonds if there's liens. See, they have to depend on, think of it this way. Say all the properties abandoned and whatever like that, that the city any city proclaims that they own. And if we were to take that list, even a part of it, even a hundred houses of it, and place liens against it, it would destroy them. Because that sends danger signal to the bondholders. Uh oh. How much more are liens are going to be placed against these properties? And if there's a lien, then they can't use that property as collateral. Right, that's right. Any step, not right. Not just HUD, Department of Transportation, any of that. Because if there's any money that a municipality gets from any federal agency, transportation, education, HUD, whatever, when there's a lien place, they can't get grant money. They can't get grant money for that thing that the lien is placed against. So let's say if there was um, a group of uh, houses in a bad neighborhood and they wanted to tear them all down and put a new housing, low income housing or something like that. But suppose out of 50 houses in that neighborhood, 10 of them had liens. Guess what? They can't get that grant money because there's liens against that property and they can't use it as collateral for their um, tax base, what they call their rateable. They can't include those properties with liens. So it destroys them. And with, with people with black and Negro thinking and all that kind of stuff like that there, it does not work because, first of all, they don't think like this. They're scared. They're just Negroes. So the other thing is because they don't have the status, and even if they did, they don't have a government that says, we back these liens. There's no one group of people that say, yes, this is true, that this is ancestral land, and yes, this lien is valid. And yet, we are on the record at saying that. You have to get on the record and say it on the record. You can't just go out there and stand on the steps and call a press conference or have a march on Washington. So, operating according to the law, the way we have been doing, is what's going to get us all of our land back. And all this nonsense that they write in, they're writing in the newspaper, they're going to start writing more more and more of it as we move, move and shake up the world. And I used to wonder, and I'll say this in closing, <coughs> things are supposed to be happening for us come 2004. Right. And I used to shake my head and I said, I don't see how that's going to happen. How is that going to happen by 2004? When there's nothing out there that's changing the way they are conducting business to the world, but then it's business as usual. Then September 11 happened. I said, whoa. <laughs> There's a spark. Then I was in Virginia. My sister who gave me, my sister and my mother who gave me those articles, I went to my, went to my sister's house. And she has Microsoft, and I want you all to try this at home. And she said, somebody called me on the phone and told me this. said, Microsoft Word, if you have it.
all caps. And you're going to come up with something very, you did it? What's first?
say it in the link. That's it correct. Says that the title exists. That's correct. And that's what it's going to say. And it'll be correct. A title does exist. And we have. So you see the dilemma that's created. So here's here's something, a scenario where they say, well, tearing down all this stuff. And maybe one could argue that they did it themselves because they were in so much debt that they wanted to just destroy the whole thing and, and uh, now collect the insurance money as opposed to being in all that debt. Right? You could make that argument. For the defense. Yeah. There's only one black woman in California that voted against that. Yeah. So they get a lot of money. We we don't say that about people side in that is um they collected all this blood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They collected yeah, a certain type of blood too. Right. I mean they were very specific about the type of blood they wanted and they just start turning people away. And they didn't use it on anybody because nobody used them. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, 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 but the point is, though, we didn't have blood, though. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? They collected the blood, right? And obviously, you know, it's not like they collected the blood because it was from those quote unquote from victims. Because they never showed up to the hospital, you know, they never needed any. So it got to the point where they had so much blood, they said, you know what? We don't even need any more for a while because we got such a supply. But now they're asking for more. No, no, no. But, but where does that supply come Yeah, where do you think of it? They used it. I believe they used it for themselves. And I'm thinking if they're going to use it, I think it's going to be. It has to be used already. It's going to be a medicine. Why do you think they need blood? Need blood? First of all, how long can you take it? Even if it's a refrigerator? Two months? Nine days, six to nine days. Okay. What do you think they need to blood? Somebody told me what it was. Drink it. Yeah. Somebody told me. Depends on whose blood it is. Right. Somebody told me it would be blade. Blade? I'm not hurt now. Wesley Snipe. Wesley Snipe. Wesley Snipe is the only vampire that is walking dead. And okay. they get all of the head vampires around the world and met and they turned on the sprinkler system and blood came out of it and they went crazy. And they have these people. But you see, it's not anybody's blood. Well, if you had that uh, limit, they wanted just to out. With the snake blood, who right. with his blood would allow them to walk. Right. Okay. Walk. Okay. Walk. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Right. That makes sense. But the thing is, I don't think they got a whole lot of our blood in, 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 in all that. And I think they probably had to destroy all that blood they got. Because they didn't want it blood. Right. And, it's and, useless, right. And we want to come out. But those of us who did go, their blood got labeled differently than the other folks' blood yeah. that they were collecting. Yeah. I talked to a couple of people who went and donated blood, and they got put in like, you could be in this line here, and then have like people here collecting blood, and they were just sending us to certain places where they were collecting blood versus the other folks, so that they didn't run into that problem about mm-hmm. whose blood is this in this corner here, mm-hmm. because we know whose blood it is. But they still didn't get enough. It's not enough. They have to have a continuous supply of it, so even whatever they got out of September 11th is just, you know, like a, a band aid on a hemorrhage. You know what I'm saying? The American Red Cross has continuous uh, blood drive. But our people are out of it. When they came up with AIDS, our people were out of the blood donation system. <laughs> we don't like getting needles anyway. And then here they are talking about AIDS from the needle? Oh no, I like anybody's blood now. Because our people are too scary about that kind of stuff. Have you heard this? I heard this from a guy in the he is. And a bad one is that. He said something one day when we uh, left out of this election and we spoke to him outside. He said prior to that, President Bush and after the Senate resigned. Resigned? Yeah. No. Well, this is what he said. Now, they kept their position for the sake of the peace 
when you say an imperial government, you're saying it's the government of those who say, I am. They cannot fight that. They cannot fight that because everybody wants you to have a representative in Washington to block you. They want you to have a representative on the city council to do what? Block you. They want you to have a representative on the EEO commission to do what? Block you. The Human Relations Commission to what? Block. Block. And the bar. They want you to have right the bar association to do what? They want the AMA for the doctors to do what? The dental association for the dentist. For the dentist. Right. They want you to go and get registered. To do what? Block you from exercising I am capable of doing it myself. <laughs> you are the empire. The empire is inside of you. Don't go looking all out there. Where's my empire? And then we'll because they'll ask you that in court. Where, where is this empire? My empire is right here inside of me. I am. And that's what that star and crescent represents. And that's why every nation on the planet, they may have a star and crescent some kind of way, but it's not correct. Even India, you know they keep showing India and Pakistan against each other, feuding, blah, blah, blah. India's flag, flag is green with a white star and crescent, and, this, and, and the uh, thing is tilted. This thing is tilted. Because it can't be correct. It cannot have the correct sacred geometry in it. They're not allowed. And if they dare try to do it, they'll be assassinated. They better not try to take that seat. Because they know only the right ones can take that seat. And the right ones, when we step up, does anybody say, you're not a moor? Uh -uh. Do they say, you're not from here when you say you're a moor? Uh-uh. No, they don't say that. They'll never say that. Say you're a moor and this is your land. Nobody challenges that at all. They can't get there. So that's the conclusion of my, this is my land. This is a flag for my land. We are the empire. This is what. So, you know, don't be misled. And now, now, now we have a situation where everybody in the world has a little bit of this. On their dollar bill, they put that the capstone is not attached. Everybody takes a piece and they twist it and contort it just a little bit because they're not sovereign and they can't use it in its, in its direct form. Why? They're powerful. They're the most powerful military industrial complex in the world. Why can't they you why they why couldn't they put that capstone on that period? They're not the right one. What would happen if they did? They would get killed. And Zodiacus would see to it. They can't use it. So I am listening to what you're saying here and I mean I believe that with everything that you're saying. Mm -hmm. But I I'm, I'm, I'm getting a feeling that what you're saying is that the creator of that's correct. that's our mother. She knows it's our time. She's pushing us. Uh, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you see Glenn and Charles, they give me the signal like, woo woo. Time They do that to me. I just want to add what the also was asking, only if you stay in the light. Right. 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 That could be your demise. Those moors, those moors who have left and have corrupted this, going out there, prostituting for pennies, that's what I said. Instead of doing that. pennies. They lost the light. They got off the path. Right. They can't get back from here. Even if they, at some point in time, we would allow them back, and I'm saying that that would be a judgment call at that time, whatever. Even if they were to come back, they have lost, because we've moved so fast and so far, and we're doing things, and even if they were to come back now, they'd be lost. They have to go back to beginner's class. Really, if they come back,
we can. You know, my, my question when it comes to them is, well, even if that's true, what you're saying is true, what's going to choose? I mean, I, I don't get it. I mean, it's like, you want to say all the stuff that I see in Baylor when they have to that's in the But when these people want to check on people, they have to get in touch with you. How come? I mean, like, I don't get it. I mean, why? You tell me that these people have to call you to see if these people, I, I don't get it. Help me out. I mean, like, I'm not I don't get it. What did he say? I don't know.
and that only people who were more that had these documents could get a copy of that front page. And I was wrong. So I went to Washington. Now, see, you have to test things. You can't just, you, you know, you have to test. I went to Washington to the Library of Congress. I met with the undersecretary of the Library of Congress. Can't remember his name. He gave us a tour. <laughs> it's huge. That was a building. Went down there, did that. So then we're there to get some documents filed with the Library of Congress. So we asked, well, what's the effect of doing this? What, what does it get us? Because we thought, we were told, that this takes us out of the, juris the state's jurisdiction. Okay? So I wanted to know, how does that take us out of the state's jurisdiction? And so <coughs> the lady said, well, I don't know. How that? I said, well, don't we have to have these papers in order to get this? She said, no. She said, anybody can get a copy of this. I said, well, well, does this entitle us to having a copy of the document? They said, we don't have the document. We don't have the clock of destiny. It's an unpublished work. I said, well, why, why should anybody want to have a copy of the front page of his copyright application? Because that's all you get. Three copyright applications where he supposedly filled it out, sent it into the Library of Congress as an unpublished work. And she said, well, I don't know. <laughs> this was the, the main secretary and the people. So I was really confused. Then she showed us a box, a bin, full of envelopes. Envelopes full of front pages of his copyright application from people from so-called moors all over the country. They got sent back because they didn't have a zip code on them. And so then she said, well, they'll just stay here until these people have paid for it, and they'll just stay here until these people call us up and give us the correct zip code. So, wait, right? The whole thing just was an illusion. So anybody could get the document. What was the purpose of the Zodiac Constitution? I know not what. Because I tested the darn thing in court. I went to court with that damn thing. I, I lied to you not. I went to federal court right across the street here and said, I'm under this Zodiac Constitution. I'm not under the United States Constitution. And these other courts, state courts, don't have jurisdiction over me. Well, <laughs> it's the, I went through some humiliating experiences and I have these classes, so I try to shield you all from that stuff, right? <laughs> that judge wrote me a 12-page decision on this Zodiac Constitution that it was not valid at law, blah, 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 blah. And then I was told, oh, he's wrong. Oh, he doesn't have the jurisdiction. Oh, he can't take rid of mandamus, file a rid of mandamus against the judge, and this and that and the other. I had been through some circles, I'm telling you. Come to find out the judge was right that the Zodiac Constitution is not, it's just a published work. It's a published document that's on file that has the copyright on file with the Library of Congress. Other than that, it's nothing. That if you were to write a poem and send it to the copyright office to have a copyright and don't send in the, the poem, say you're not going to publish it. Do you understand? That Zodiac Clock of Destiny, <coughs> that Zodiac, that identification document, that um, Clock of Destiny, they're just documents, actually. And you know how they have them filed? Under fiction. <laughs> you see, so when you, you, and they showed me. You understand? So when I came back, I was, well, where is our stuff registered? What, what, where are we relative to the United States? I wanted to know because I was really ready. I wanted out. I don't want anything else to do with it. There's just too many lies. I've been locked up twice, once arguing with the judge, got, got locked up for contempt because I'm in there arguing my status. And, and it didn't even happen. In fact, I was in there arguing with the judge and got cited for contempt, and I wasn't even the one in court. I was in court helping y'all read over a traffic ticket, and I got locked up. I'm going to tell you. And, 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 and I got locked up because I was trying to fight a cause that was not proper at law, and I didn't know. And these people who pushed and were telling me all these things, they were lying to me and had never tested that stuff in court. All those wars down in 
Cleveland, Detroit, New York, all that stuff. They, they got tapes from lectures, Mother and Son, Round Table, uh, you name them. None of them have been in court. None of them have challenged any of that, excuse my language, bullshit <laughs> in federal court. <laughs> and, and see, I was innocent. I was like, okay, this sounds good. Let's do this. Let's challenge it. You get up in there and get embedded. And the judge is like, he was looking at this stuff. And, and at first, you know, I felt pretty confident because I was believing that they were lying. The judges were against me. But it was those very federal judges. So I'm, in, in hindsight, actually, I see that there were things that I could have done differently, even given what I knew at the time. But it was those federal judges that taught me almost everything I know that I teach in these classes about law. It wasn't any of those laws. Because they don't know this stuff. So when they talk about somebody calling from Washington to check to see if you're for, they're lying. <laughs> yes, uh, remember what you were saying about the land, how the corporation wants you to go be the representatives and things yes. like that. So in the case of what Regina just asked about, why would they have this, why would these different federal agencies have to speak to those people? If they know that they're under that incorporation or signed some incorporated or yeah. any other Morse American type organization, then they know that they stay wars and they're not violent. And they don't call them either. It's, it's, the the same, it's the same difference as being represented by the state representative. Yeah, then they don't call those more scientific people either. They still pay taxes. Right. Yeah. And all those wars about the country, are we not supposed to pay taxes? All of them are paying taxes. All of them were paying taxes. I was the first one to stop paying taxes and put the thing on the record that I wasn't paying taxes. I wasn't paying a water bill. I wasn't paying an electric bill, no cable, and had all that stuff. I wasn't paying a dime. So when they talk all that big talk, it's garbage. It's garbage. And then you say, well, why can't all the Moors come together and really love one another and work together? Because they are corrupt. I mean, we have met, what, some of y'all know firsthand, the corruption is out there, it is unreal. Haven't you seen, seen it? Yeah. Haven't y'all seen yeah. the corrupt things they do? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 you know what I'm saying? And this may even sound naive, but, I mean, we, in, in terms of, I'm not saying here, but in terms of what, then, so then that means in the, the mental traits and then maybe even yeah. some of those. They are agents, and we have been infiltrated. And I know who they are. I know who they are. But it doesn't matter, because they can't be here and stand in this light. Because you know what? And they say, well, maybe your house is bugged. Fine. Maybe your phone is bugged. Fine. Maybe it is. I tell them, come to class, please. Because <laughs> you know what? Anything I say at home, I'll tell you to your face. I don't have any skeletons in the closet, and if I did, if you threaten to blackmail me, I'm going to tell it. <laughs> I'm going to tell it first. You threaten to blackmail me? Okay, I'm going to tell everybody what I did. So, now it's out. Now what you got? You say, Queen, you can't huh? stop me because I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you. No, I'll, t I'll tell. You see, there are no secrets. I haven't taken any oath to keep anything a secret. And I'm not going to tell anything. <laughs> Actually. I'm allowed to tell it. So all of those people out there with the corruption have made it harder for us to get to establish the relations because all those Albions are not against us. And we need to work with them because some of them have been put in place by our ancestors as the gatekeepers when we come along to transition this power back to us and to guide us and help us. And they have, that those agents are seeking to destroy that relationship. We won't let them. They can't destroy what Zuni Africans have put in place. Can't do it. No matter what they do, they can't destroy this. We are going to rule again from this group right here that came out of this little back room in this bill. We shall do it. So motive may be. So motive is. We rule. And, and there are those out there who try to stop us with their undercurrents and things like that. They can't even come face to face with us and say, we challenge what you were doing. When we see them in the street, any of these infiltrators, or, uh, if you ran across one today, I won't say who he was. I won't put my head down for anybody. No. But when you're wrong, you put your head down. 
when the light shows up. You, you go to the corner, right? You want to hide like a rope. You run from the light. <laughs> okay? You might get squashed. And that's what they do. Do they, they know we are here three days a week? Every week we are here. Do they ever come and say they want to challenge what, what we teach? That we, what we're doing is wrong or anything like that? No. They don't challenge any of that stuff. They're constantly trying to send people in here to spy and take what we do. Right? Yeah. Aren't they constantly trying to do that? You have to stop. They have to stop them at the door out there sometimes. You yeah. have to tell them stop, stop bringing recording devices in here. Right. Right. We have a lot of that. Okay. Why are they constantly trying to record and find out what we do if what they have is true? And superior. And superior. Do your own thing. Don't take Charlie, do you have that um, flyer? Have y'all seen that flyer? You yeah, that, flyer. that little yellow flyer. Well, they took the whole two first series of our classes and they call themselves trying to have classes. Why not come up with your own class? Uh, oh, yes. They charge you $13. They fell apart because they said they couldn't pay the light bill. It was 26 classes and now the 26, only one of them was there. They took all of our classes that we created, all of our materials, and, and, and word for word, right off our syllabus, and said, oh, the science is for everybody. So they tried to teach what they didn't even put together. They fell apart. But the reason they couldn't pay the electric bill is because they couldn't answer the people's questions because it wasn't their research. So they didn't know how to follow through. Well, how, how a lot of people in here go astray is because a lot of these people who have once been here, they, they look good on the outside, mm -hmm. and they talk with a subtle voice, for, mm -hmm. and, and it's attractive to people. Oh, you know, this happened to me, and guess what Queen did, or guess what this person did. And next thing you know, you suffer. Yeah. You suffer. And on the surface, they have a thing that they all call um, ex parte, meaning one side. Mm -hmm. On the surface, it sounds like um, it's, pr it's, 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 it's prom species. On one side, if you hear all the evidence, it sounds authentic. They got papers, they got other people saying, yeah, she did it, I was a witness. But when you examine it to the full extent, you say, wait a minute, y'all, all of y'all knew better, mm -hmm. if you can examine it. But if you come to class half the time, you ain't going to get all the intelligence you need to say, all of you were wrong. You're not going to get it. So when you go astray, you go with those. They don't even have the courage to come and face up That's and right. say, I feel like this. If you smack me upside the head, right? And I know you smack me upside the head and I can go tell, let's say, you know, we're children, I'm gonna go tell your mama. I'm gonna go tell your mama that you slapped me upside the head, right? And I don't care if you're there or not, I'm gonna tell on you, right? They don't even have the courage to come and say, you slapped me upside the head, right? And this is what you did. They all out there telling all their friends that they got slapped upside the head, but they won't come and confront and say, you slapped me upside the head. Because nothing happened, nothing was done to them. They just wanted to steal. Let me just, I tell you, you met with some people. They said, what was the, I thought they said, well, what the heck is all any good if you went to the county to record the papers, you can't get recorded. I said, well, you know what? I just happened to have mine right here. <laughs> <laughs>
organization where you where people don't keep their promise. So then I said, hmm. Well, I didn't keep my promise to you, and I'm explaining to you the reasons why the things that you want to happen cannot happen. But you want, let's say, okay, and the individual is a tax issue. So then, so so then the, the issue said, then then the person said, well, you didn't make me tax exempt. I said, oh really? I recall we did it at the same time. Huh? Now, I said, where's your thirteen percent? Oh oh, the double double double. <laughs> and I would say the same thing as they were here tonight. Well, this very government that you don't want to pay thirteen percent to. You want us to stand for you so the corporation won't attack you. Where's your 13%? Well, if you help me, I'll give you 13%. I said, oh, no, no, no. We won't do that. <laughs> you give your 13%, and then we'll put you in line to get help. But unless you contribute your 13%, don't ask this government to come and stand up for you. So, what pay? Next week. They're coming next week. We're solving all that problem. Because we have to have everybody out by April 15th. Because all our people are out of that system by April 15th. So, and it's going to, for some people, depending on who they work for, it's going to take a little longer than others. Okay? But by April 15th, everybody who's great field is going to be out of that tax system. Out. Past, present, future. Out. So, but for the people who, <laughs> they will. You didn't make me tax exempt. Well, fine, because I'll tell you what, all those wars, because there are people out there who are tax exempt, who don't participate in stuff, but guess what? When our stuff goes out to the proper authorities, that this is the group, this is the people, this is the list who's tax exempt, they're going to come after you with a vengeance, all those other people. But they, and we're going to tell them to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell them to do it because you're not going to stand in my face and say, I didn't make you tax exempt, so I don't want, I'm not going to give anything to this government, but every time I want help with something, a court case, anything that happens to me, I'm going to come running for some help. Don't do it. You got to be here, you got to work, you got to participate. So, and as far as the land issue and all that stuff is concerned, um, Grace Field has the capacity to protect people in those tax issues, in those land issues, but we will set a criteria right now, I don't know what that is, as to who qualifies for activities. We're going to do that, so you will hear little bits and pieces I can't control. There's some people who have them, and I want to tell you that because I don't want to be angry with somebody because you heard that so-and-so had activities. There are people who have them, okay? <laughs> and um, there will be others who will have them. Don't get mad, don't get jealous, just wait your time. Don't come at me, where is mine coming up? Because I don't know. <laughs> Quite frankly, and all I can say is, we're working on it. Those people who are sincere, who work with us, who just, you know, are patient, don't want out there, do all those crazy things, because as soon as you do that, that's going to hold up your process right there. So don't do that. And if you find it, say, well, I don't care, so be it. You know? So be it. That's all I can say. And uh, I thank everybody for coming out tonight. I enjoyed you and hope to see you next time.